Hi friends, today we're going to learn how to draw a birthday cake. I'm super excited. For this drawing, we're going to use the colors pink, blue, green, purple, and yellow. All right, let's get started. So, first off, let's draw the outline for the cake. So we'll start off by drawing this, this um, kind of uh, these candles. We have a little curve and then we have these candles that are the shape of kind of rectangles. So we'll draw four candles. One, two, three, four, five. Five candles. And we'll draw the loop to go around. So we've got this oval that's the top of the birthday cake. Now let's draw the side of the birthday cake. We'll make these squiggly lines going across with the, that will show the icing. And then we'll go down and we'll squiggle again. There we go. We've got these squiggly, these squiggly lines. Then we go down and we do one more layer of squiggles. And now we go down and we have the bottom of the cake. There we go. Now we're going to draw a plate for the cake to be on. So we draw that round oval shaped plate and now we're drawing the fire on the candles so we've got the the candle wick that little piece of fabric and then you have the flame on top so we're drawing that there we go putting them on fire um, wonderful so we've got our black and white birthday cake now we need to color it in with lots of colors so this is the fun part so what part should we color? Should we color the middle of the cake? How about we'll start at the top layer. So we're going to color it with this bright pink color. And this could be one type of frosting. Uh, frosting is an edible, yummy, sugary cream um, paste that you put on the outside of cakes to make them taste really sugary and yummy. Um, let's see, what can I teach you about this picture? So, if you look at the candles, did you know candles are made out of something called wax? Wax is this kind of like, it's kind of like a plastic that melts really easily. And so the candle, as the fire is lit on a candle on that wick, the candle gets shorter and shorter. As the wick burns, the candle starts dripping and melting. And then it, it cools really quickly at the bottom of the candle and you can take them out without having to eat the wax. As far as I know, I think wax, if you accidentally eat a little bit, doesn't hurt your body very much. That being said, you never should eat wax just for fun. From a from birthday candle because they probably have other chemicals in them that you don't want to have but i think if you accidentally get a little bit of piece that you accidentally eat on a birthday cake it's probably not going to be too bad for you so that's a little bit of interesting facts about wax did you know that bees in a beehive they actually um bees make wax there's something called bees wax so if you have honeycomb that bees make, the honeycomb has lots of honey in it, but also it, its structure, it's made out of wax, this kind of plasticky substance. Um, some people actually take beeswax and they'll put it in their mouth and they'll chew it like gum. So they'll take honeycomb and they'll eat the honeycomb where you have the beeswax filled with honey and they'll chew on it kind of like gum and, and, uh, I think there's some good properties to it. Anyway, that's some interesting facts about wax and candles on top of a birthday cake are usually made out of wax with some sort of wick on top. That's the little part that you light on the fire uh, that looks like string. That's called a wick. So you have the candle that's made out of wax and then you have the candle wick at the top and that's where you take a match or a lighter or you wouldn't do this probably because it's kind of dangerous and you never play with fire but your mom or your daddy they could take a lighter or a match 
and they could light on top of the candle. So you see we just uh, we just colored in the second layer of the birthday cake, a blue color. And now we're gonna color the third layer, this bright green color. This is a very colorful, kind of pastel colored birthday cake. It kind of looks like an Easter birthday cake a little bit. Great. Um, let's see, what else can I teach you about birthday cakes? Well, I mean, this could be a birthday cake. This could also be a wedding cake. It could be a different kind of cake. Did you know that people, when they get married, they usually have a big cake. They'll pay someone a lot of money to make this big cake. Um, and sometimes they'll put ornaments on top of the cake. Like they'll put these little figures of, of a husband and wife getting married on top of the cake. When I got married, we had a bright pink cake that was really yummy. It had the sugary frosting on the outside and it was really yummy on the inside. I think it had some kind of like jelly in the middle and some cream and cake and it was really yummy. You know what I like to eat with cake? I like to have eat cake and have milk with my cake. I love having sugary things like cake with milk, like cookies and milk, or cake and milk, or chocolate, or M&Ms with milk, or candy bars with milk. It tastes so, so good. So this bottom layer of the cake, we're going to color purple. So we've got four colors on our cake so far. We have pink on the top, and then blue, and then green. And then we have purple. So now all we need to color is we need to color the candles in and the fire on top of the candles and then the platter or the plate. Platter is a funny word for plate. It's usually a big plate that you'll put things like cakes on that's really pretty and that can hold big foods. That's called a platter. So we have a cake platter or plate. So we're gonna color this uh, in all of these five um, candles with a bunch of different colors. Now we have green, very good. Well, let me, what can I teach you about this picture now? Maybe I could teach you about the fire on the candles. So candles that are lit, that fire is very hot. In fact, fire is always hot. It's so hot that you can't ever touch it. If you touch it, it will really hurt and it can burn you and make you have a scar. When you have an owie that, that doesn't go heal all the way because your skin almost melts. So it's, it's really, you really have to be careful when you're near candles or fire because it's not safe. And it's important that when you have your birthday cake, it's important to make sure you put out your candle, which means that you put out the fire. Like you could, um, your mommy or daddy could take the candles after they get blown out, even if they've been blown out and the fire is gone. It's important to get the candles wet. So your mommy or daddy could take the candles and they could put them under the faucet um, because the wick even if the fire's gone, the wick could still be very hot and have little, um, little like ashes in it, and it could start a fire. Like if you just blew out a candle and then threw it in the trash, it could make the trash can catch on fire. So it's very important when you have a birthday cake with candles that you put the birthday cake, uh, the candle in the fire. Uh, underwater to get the wicks wet so that they don't melt things and catch things on fire. Um, so that's very important. So right now we're gonna color in the candle fire and then I think we'll be all done. This has been really fun. I hope you kids have enjoyed this drawing and we have new coloring drawing videos every day. So we hope to see you tomorrow and hope you'll subscribe to the channel. Thanks and have a good day.
Hi friends! Today we're going to learn how to draw a home. This is going to be so much fun. I'm excited. So for this drawing, we need to have markers red, yellow, green, blue, and purple, and brown. So let's get started. So first off, we're going to draw the outline for the house. We'll draw the wall, draw across, draw down, then go across the bottom. There we go. We've got this kind of rectangle, almost looks like a square. Then draw a rectangle for the door and put a little circle for the for the doorknob. Now we're drawing the roof. There we go. It looks like a triangle. All right, we'll draw a couple squares for the windows. There we go. Another square over here. Hey, that house almost looks like a smiley face. Well, not smiling, but the door kind of looks like a mouth and the, the windows kind of look like eyes. So we're going to have little little gutters or little um, siding there at the bottom of the roof. Now, let's see, what should we color? We can color in how about a chimney? So a chimney is usually made out of bricks and that's where smoke comes out. So if you're cooking something in the chimney or if you put wood in the fire in the chimney, that's where all the smoke leaves. We'll draw a circle here for the sun. There we go. We've got the sun here. Oh, smiley face, sun. And we'll draw some fluffy clouds. There we go. We'll draw one cloud there. We'll draw another cloud over here. Wonderful. Add a little smiley face. Make it happy clouds. Wonderful. Well, now what should we color? How about we'll color some bushes? A bush right over there and a bush right over here on the left side of the house. Draw a little path, a walkway to walk up to the door and knock. And we'll draw a line across horizontally and that will be the grass. We'll draw a tree. There we go. It's all fluffy. Perfect. And we will draw another tree over here. There we go. We have two trees, two bushes, two windows, two clouds, and only one sun and one door and one chimney. All right, let's color the house in red. So let me teach you something about houses. Did you know that houses on their outside, they, they usually have either plastic or wood siding or metal? Um, I'd say a lot of houses have this vinyl plastic siding. Um, also, a lot of houses have bricks for their siding. So this could be a red brick house or this could be a vinyl house that has red vinyl or plastic. So we'll color this red. There we go. Um, there we go. We'll just color this in. Ooh, that's fun. Um, so what's your favorite color? Do you have a favorite color? I really like the color blue and yellow and white. What color do you like the most? Do you like green or red or orange or blue or black or purple? We're actually going to color the trees purple later on and that's going to be silly. I think you'll like that. So we'll keep on coloring this house. We're about halfway done. Good job. Okay. Let me teach you about something else that we see in the house. So, did you know that windows have, see those two lines going across the window, like across? Those two, that reinforces the window and makes it stronger so that if winds blow, the window doesn't break. All right, we're going to finish up drawing this siding of the house. Did you know that there's people whose job it is to put on siding of houses? All right, what should we color next? We could color the door. We could color the bushes. We could color the tree. Let's color the door a bright yellow. 
This is a colorful house. I don't know too many people who have bright yellow doors and red siding, but this house has character. So we're going to have it be red uh, with a yellow door. Um, maybe, maybe it was painted with like pineapple juice or something or lemon juice. That'd be silly, huh? Okay, so we'll color in the door. There we go. Let's see. What else do we want to color now? We could color a bush or a tree. Let's color this blue. Oh yeah, look at that blue. I love the color blue. We'll color the roof blue. Do you know that roofs, do you know why they're pointed? Why they're not just flat? It's because when it rains or snows, uh, a roof that's slanted at an angle that's kind of like a triangle, it helps the water and the snow to fall off of the roof. Because if the, the roof is flat and um, there's a lot of snow on it, it could collapse. A triangle is also very strong. So um, the roofs are very strong when they're triangles. So I think that's one of the reasons why lots of roofs are kind of pointed at the top and not just flat. Well, all right, uh, what should we color now? We just colored the roof blue. Um, we could color the trees in now, or um, let's color this little, this little lining here. Let's color that green. That's where gutters would go. Uh, it kind of looks like a colorful gutter. We'll also color the chimney green. This is a really funny, house how many chimneys would be green um, so let's see what should we color now we could color the sky blue we could color the trees green how about we'll color in the windows this light blue color there we go you know that windows are made out of glass and did you know how glass is made so glass is made by melting sand and and things like that Pretty interesting, huh? All right, let's color these bushes. When I grew up, we had a lot of bushes around our house. Our house kind of looked like this house, except for it was blue instead of red. And on the bush, there were all these red berries. The red berries, though, on the bush around our house, I think they were poisonous. They weren't edible berries. They weren't like raspberries or, or uh, strawberries or blueberries. Um, they were this kind of different berry that sometimes insects would eat or little birds would eat, but they weren't okay to be eaten by people. Um, yeah, we had this 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 bush. It was kind of fun. It went all the way around our house. It was kind of like a fortress or like a big wall, like the wall of China. But it was it were these these bushes that were probably about five feet tall, about as tall as an adult. Um, and they would give us a little privacy and be kind of like having a fence. But it was a lot more natural and pretty. So now let's color the tree in green. We're just going to color all green. We're not going to worry about coloring the individual leaves. We're going to color them all together. Um, did you know that a lot of plants are green? And one of the reasons that they're green is because of a process called photosynthesis. The green stuff in plants helps plants to get the sunlight and turn it into energy for the tree, for the plant. And then the roots go down into the soil, into the dirt, and they kind of suck up um, nutrients from the soil, like like food, they kind of use their roots kind of like a straw down into the into the ground to suck up the nutrients that help get, give the plants food. So we'll keep on coloring this tree. There we go, what should we color now? We could color the tree trunks or the sky or the sun. Let's color the door handle blue. We could also color the path right in front of the house. That'd be, that'd be a good idea. Um, all right, let's see, what do we want to color now? 
Let's color the tree trunks. We're going to color the tree trunks purple. I doubt you'll ever see a tree with a purple trunk. But for this drawing, one of the most important things of drawing is having fun. So we're going to have this uh, drawing of a house or drawing of a home have purple trees. <laughs> I've seen brown trees. I've also seen white trees or light brown or dark brown trees. But I don't think I've ever seen a purple tree. I might have seen a green tree that had moss growing on it, but a purple tree, that would be something else to see that. Let's color in the grass. So we'll color the grass this light green. Um, did you know that there are different kinds of grasses? Some grasses are soft, others are more thick. Um, some are darker green, others are more bluish. Um, and uh, yeah, I love playing with grass though. It's so nice to have grass outside. I went to a country called Argentina where there, was, there wasn't as much grass as where I grew up. And it was just dirt outside. And when it got windy, there was dirt flying all over the place. It would get in our eyes and on our clothes and on our face. So when we'd wash our face off, when we'd come inside, there'd be dirt on our face and on our shirt collars and so forth. Um, so it's really nice to have grass to hold down the dirt so it doesn't fly around everywhere. Grass is also soft, so if you fall down, it's nice to fall on grass and not just hard rocks and dirt. We'll color the sun in now. Did you know that the sun is really, really big? So the sun is actually s bigger than the entire world. So this house is really, really small compared to the sun. Even though in the picture the sun looks smaller than the house, that's because the sun is so far away from the house. If we were closer to the sun, that we'd see that it was really, really big. Um, the sun is super duper hot. Um, in fact, if there weren't the sun there, we wouldn't be able to live. It would be too, too cold um, outside. And if the sun were a little bit closer to Earth, it would be too hot for us to live here. But the sun's just the right distance away from the Earth so that it's not too hot and not too cold. It's just right for us to be able to live on Earth. All right, so let's color the sky this light blue. Blue is one of my favorite colors. I really like it. It just seems so relaxing to look at it. Did you, In fact, did you know that certain colors, different colors, make you feel different ways? So, for example, blue is a color that often makes people feel relaxed. Um, red is kind of a more intense color. Um, I'm not an expert on what all the colors make people feel, but I know that blue helps people feel relaxed and to feel like they trust. Um, so that's just kind of interesting that colors actually affect um, not just the color, but they also affect how you feel when you see the color. So it's good that outside the sky is blue. So when we go outside on a walk or on a hike, it helps us feel relaxed and happy. If the sky were red all the time, it might make us kind of not as happy and not as relaxed. Um, but, you know, the world has been just created in such a wonderful way. And it uh, it's really quite marvelous if you think about all the things that were created just the right way. Um, so... Let's keep on coloring the sky blue. Just color it over. Got the smoke coming out of the chimney there. Now, we don't want to have too much smoke going into the air because that causes pollution, which makes the air look gray. And when the air is gray, it doesn't doesn't have as doesn't make you as happy and it's 
not as healthy to breathe. Um, sometimes though the sky turns different colors like yellow or orange or red um, especially around sunrise or sunset at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day the sky will often change colors um, depending on what's happening in the sky in the clouds and the weather did you know okay here's something that's a little a little tricky but let's see if you can learn it did you know that when it's really clear skies outside that means it's high pressure outside and when it's really dark and cloudy and stormy it means it's low pressure outside the air pressure is lower when it's stormy and higher when it's really nice and sunny so that's kind of interesting you can go and tell your mom and dad that if it's sunny outside you can say it's high pressure outside and they'd be like what do you mean you'd be like well the air pressure is higher today because it's so sunny and they'd be really, really surprised. So you should do that. You should be like, it's a high pressure weather. Uh, the air is high pressure today outside. Um, so, and that's actually what causes different kinds of weather and storms. When you have a bunch of low pressure air and high pressure air, it, they, they have to move around and they displace each other and they cause wind and tornadoes and things like that. So. All right, well, we'll finish coloring in the sky. And I think that we are just about done with coloring. Anyway, I appreciate you um, coloring with us today. And I hope you'll join us next time. We have new videos every single day. And we love having you come and color with us. So let's just end by coloring this pathway in brown. And... Um, we hope to see you next time. Feel free to leave a comment below and to subscribe. All right, thanks. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Hi, friends. Today we are going to learn how to draw a fireman's truck. I am so excited for this. So what you'll need, you'll need colors, uh, markers. You need a red marker, yellow marker, black, green, and blue marker, and a gray marker as well. All right, let's get started. So to start off, let's let's draw the front of the fireman's truck. So we're going to draw the little hubcap down there, and we're going to draw the front face. I love fireman's trucks, by the way. They are so cool. And what firemen do is super duper helpful for our community. So we draw the window there, and then we draw the the kind of front segment of this truck. And now we're drawing a circle around where the wheel will be, a little curve there. It's not a complete circle. Now let's uh let's draw a little a little shield around the wheel that helps keep the wheel protected from splashing the engine uh the the truck and, and other other vehicles. Then we draw the wheel, a circle with a smaller circle inside. And now we have the front wheel drawn and the front part of the truck. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna draw the back part, the bed of the truck. Now we draw another spot for a wheel. We're gonna draw a circle around it for the wheel. There we go, draw another circle in the middle. Good, now we have two wheels on the side of this fireman's truck. Now we draw it back, and we draw it up, and now we draw the top of the truck, and it goes down. There we go. Hey, it already kind of starts to look like a fireman's truck. So now, let's draw a line here. Let's draw a couple more lines that go across the truck. Draw another line. Good job. Okay, now we're gonna draw the windows. So it's kind of a rectangle there. Let's draw one more window here. Great. Look at now they can look outside, they can see where they're driving. 
That's a good thing to have in a fireman's truck. And in any vehicle that we draw, huh? So, now let's draw a few of the back windows. A big window back here. This is probably going to be a blacked out window though. Because we don't want people to see if there's uh, what's going on in there. But we want them to be able to see out what's going on outside. And then we'll draw a little, a little siren light. So it can go anytime there's a fire. Let, let all the traffic, all the other cars know that it's coming. So we'll have a, a siren light in the front and another siren light in the back. Let's draw a mount here. This will be um, a mount that we can put the, the fireman's ladder on. So we drew a triangle there. I'm really excited. This is a fun drawing to be doing. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. Wow. And then you draw the ladder across and down. So we're drawing the, the rung right there, the end of the, the ladder there. Now we need to draw the other side of the ladder all the way across. Here we go. We've got a little thing holding the ladder there. So now Let's draw some of the rungs. Well, actually, let's first draw that um, yeah, will make it kind of thicker. So it's not just a line. We'll have um, these rungs. Every, every foot or two, there will be a rung in our fireman's ladder. And that's what firemen use when they want to climb up and they need to help someone in a burning building. They can use ladders to help them get down or so they can go up and put out the fire, even on a building that's very tall. All right. I love firemen. They help people. They save people's lives. They're super duper special people so here we've got some wires some some things that are holding down the ladder making sure it won't fall off and, or, and some reinforced um, bars making the the ladder even stronger or it could even be multiple ladders all right now let's make a little circle around this tire Circle it around. We're gonna color it in with black. I'm using a we're using a black sharpie here because sharpies are, are very deep dark colors and it makes it stand out a little bit more in the video so you can see it better. Let's do let's do that on this wheel over here on this left wheel. We'll color in the black around the rim let's color that in with dark black just color it in there we go all right it's looking good let's see what else should we color there we go let's let's put in some some dots we've got the the hubcaps there on the wheel all right, so now comes the fun part. Let's color the fire truck red. So we're gonna start coloring here on this bottom front part of the truck. Just color it red. Just fill it in with lots of good, bright colors. I remember one time growing up on my street, I lived on the same street as a fireman and he would sometimes have a fireman's truck outside of his house. I remember how big it was. And one time it was really sad. There was actually a, a fire that happened um, on his house and they had to get the fire truck there to spray it down with water to try to put out the fire. Um, fire trucks have these big long hoses that they use to spray down 
fires. Um, nowadays, they also have some other things to put out fire besides hoses. They also put out fires with um, like a certain kind of gas or a fire extinguisher. If you have seen in your house, there might be this cylinder, kind of like a big bottle that, that isn't to drink. It's just to spray fires with gas to help put out fires because fires need oxygen to burn. And if they don't have oxygen, then they won't keep on burning. So that's, those are a couple ways to put out fires. So let's just keep on coloring this fire truck make it all filled in with with a nice red color and if you don't have red you can do it with other colors you could color it orange <laughs> that might um, make it look a little different but that'd be kind of fun uh, there's nothing wrong with with coloring it a different color so here we go we're about halfway done coloring this uh, fireman's truck there we go it's going well oh yeah there we go let's color it in you know I remember as well when I was younger I went to a fireman's station that's where they have, where all the firemen work and they wait there. And when there's a fire somewhere or an accident, sometimes they'll go and they'll help out at traffic accidents, things like that. They'll come, um, they'll get like a phone call or, or a bell will ring and we'll let them know that they need to hurry and, uh, and go and help put out a fire. They even have things called firemen's poles um, where they can jump down and slide down it like a slide uh, to, to get down quickly from, from downstairs without having to go downstairs. It's, it's kind of cool. So we're going to color in these back windows. Um, so that way they're kind of blacked out. Um, we mean, you know, if there's people back there, we might not want um, people to be able to see in, but we could make it so, so that they can see out, but that we can't see in the window. So we'll just black out those windows there or red out the windows, I guess you could say. All right, now let's see, what do we want to color next? We could color the road or we could color uh, the ladder on the roof or we could color the wheels. Let's see, let's color the windows. Let's color them with this nice light blue color there we go Ooh, those windows look so nice don't they so we color in the windows with light blue and now they're looking great all right what should we color next we can color in that line on the side of the fireman's truck we can color the ladder on top of the truck we could color in uh, we could make a ground for the truck to drive on like a road, um, let's color this bottom with gray. We'll make that a nice, like a metallic gray right at the bottom of the truck. Let's color this, this metal thing up here, this little holder, um, we'll color that gray as well. There we go, color in that metal gray. Yeah, we'll color in also we'll color in this ladder to make this ladder look like it's made out of metal because a lot of ladders are made out of metal because metal is very strong and if it's made out of aluminum it can also be very light so a fireman can pick up a ladder and move it very quickly um, to where they need to and it's not too heavy so they can use it to climb up it's very strong but they can also lift it and it can extend to go very high even on tall apartment buildings can help them get on the second or, or third level of the fl uh, floor um, to help put out the fire and help rescue anyone who might be trapped inside during a fire so we're going to color in we're going to color in this all to be this gray metal color and if you don't have a gray marker you could color it in black 
or, or any color that you have that you want to do, you could color it in. So we'll color that in. There we go. All right. Our ladder's looking pretty good. Now what should we color? We could color in the wheels. Let's color, there we go. I noticed one of the little prongs there was was missing one of the sides of the of the ladder so we just fixed that so what do we want to color now we could color a um, we could color more of the vehicle or we could color its background let's color the tires gray so we're gonna color around the tires and there is nice gray color yeah these rubber tires those are big tires a fire truck has to have really big tires because fire trucks can weigh a lot. They can weigh thousands of pounds um, because they'll, uh, they've got ladder and they've got people and it's a big truck. So we're gonna color in the bottom to be this metal gray as well. And this top by the siren lights, we'll have that be metal. A little hubcap in the front of the truck that will also be green. And we'll color it that. Now let's color um, in the handles to open up the door of the fireman's truck. Now let's see what we want to color. Let's color this little shield around the wheel. We'll just color that kind of a, a black color. There we go. We got that one wheel on the left. Now let's color around the wheel on the right. And this is just one side of the fireman's truck. On the other side, there would be two other wheels, but we're just drawing it as if you're looking from the side. So, what should we color next? We could color in the ground, or let's color in the light. So make them this, this uh, orange red color. So that way when the lights are flashing, they can make different colors and, and let people know that the fireman's truck is coming. Now let's let's color a road. He's driving on a road, right? The fireman truck's on a road. So we have the fire truck. Now let's color these little lines in the middle of the road. You'll notice when you're driving on the road, there's almost always these these white or these yellow lines in the middle of the road that let cars know they should stay on what side of the road. So this fire truck would would stay on the right side of the road and if another vehicle had to drive past them they'd be on the other side of the road but anytime you have a like a police car or a fireman's truck um, doing its siren um, it's good courtesy to pull over to the side of the road so they can pass you let's color some trees in the background so here's some some roots of the tree the tree trunk let's color in the, the branches there of the tree and let's make this a fluffy tree with lots of leaves can't see the leaves but we'll, we'll color in that later so we're gonna draw another tree draw the the tree trunk and we're gonna make some branches and uh, and then color that in afterwards and uh, we'll have we'll have it be like grassy area and then behind it we can put a sky So let's draw some stuff on this side, on the back side of the fire truck. There we go. Oh, that's a big tree, huh? Now we're gonna, whoa, look at how many leaves that tree has. We'll make it look like it has some roots that go into the ground. Then we're gonna draw the ground, the grass layer. And let's just, whoa, look at there we go. All right, those could be bushes or we could make them into clouds later or mountains. So we're gonna add some texture to the tree trunk. We're gonna add these lines and that makes it look like the tree has bark or tree skin, it's called bark. Um, bark is comes in different colors, it's often brown. Um, on some trees, like the white birch tree, it's actually kind of white and black with black marks on it. So we're gonna texture the tree trunk and the bark so it looks a certain way. 
Great, that looks like a nice tree, doesn't it? So now, what should we color? We have a few options. We can color the road. We can color in the trees. We can color in the sky. Let's color in the trees. That sounds like a fun idea. So we're going to color in the tree trunk brown. We're going to have it be brown bark. And that's going to be wonderful. So we're coloring the tree trunk to be brown. This is great. There we go. We've got one tree trunk. Let's color in this small tree trunk. Brown. You can still see the texture there with the black marks. It looks like bark. Can you say bark? Bark. It's not like bark like a dog. It's It sounds the same, but it's bark is the the side of a tree. It's that thick skin that makes a tree really rough on the outside and it protects the tree from from animals and from weather and it helps the tree stay safe during the winter time um, and some trees if you tap into their trunk um, if you drill into their bark some actually produce sap which makes maple syrup so let's color in the the leaves of the tree but instead of drawing the individual leaves we're just going to color in all of the leaves to be green so we're going to color in with this darker green. Can, there's a lot of different ways you can color it in. We like to color it in with straight lines, but you can color it in using kind of a bunch of circles or whatever works for you. Um, one of the best things about coloring is it's all about having fun. So there's not just one right way to color. Coloring is just a, a way you can have fun and you can show people what you're thinking about. And so it's very, very fun. All right, what should we color now? Maybe we should get a different color green for the for this other tree. So we're going to make this a, a little bit of a different color, kind of bluish green for the, the tree in the background. Coloring in that, that tree there. And now we just need to color in the other tree to make it green as well. So let's color that in and we're going to do it with a different color green. It's a it's a light green. It's kind of like a lime yellow green green, very light and bright. I like that color. It looks really nice. So we color that in. And the trees are looking more colorful. This is exciting. By the end of this drawing, everything's going to be all colored in and look really nice. We still need to color the road. We also need to color in the grass and the sky. Um, but we're, we're getting there. We're making progress. So let's just stay with it. And let's color in the grass now with this, with this green. I really like this green. So we'll color in the grass with this light green. And we'll see what that looks like. Wonderful. Look at that. It looks beautiful. And so we color it all in around the roots. Yeah, there we go on the sides of the trunks. Ooh, this is coming together. This is starting to look really nice. I'm really excited about this. Let's color the grass behind the fire truck. So we're going to color it in with this lime green color. There we go. Now let's do underneath. The tree trunk we'll color on the sides of it we'll color down we'll cover over it and then we'll fill it in here we go nice doesn't that look like nice green grass that'd be fun to play on i'd love to go and run around on grass right now that would be wonderful right now where i am though it's really cold outside it's winter time so i wouldn't I wouldn't want to run outside on the grass unless I was really bundled up warm. So now, what should we color? We can color the asphalt on the road, or we could color these these bushes or uh, in the background. Let's color those in. There we go. Make sure it's all colored in. And there we go. Let's color it on the other side. Of the fireman's truck right over here so we'll color that in 
Wow, there we go. This is really starting to get colorful. Imagine how good it will look, the picture when we when we color in the sky and, and we color uh, the road as well to be really colorful. This is gonna be wonderful. So we're gonna color these lines in the middle of the road. We're gonna color them in with yellow, yellow stripes in the road. And like I said, that helps people driving cars and driving the fire truck to know what side of the road to drive on because it's not safe to drive on the wrong side of the road. Where I live, you gotta drive on the right side of the road, but in some places, in certain countries, they actually drive on the left side of the road and it's very interesting. So, let's see, do we want to color in the road? Do I wanna color a gray or maybe a black for the asphalt on the road? I think that would probably work best. Let's color it in with black. So we're coloring it in with black. There we go. Nice black color. Wonderful. And just color it all in. Let me tell you some interesting things about roads while I'm when we're, while we're driving, uh, drawing this black road. So black absorbs heat really well. And so when it's a really hot, sunny day, a black road gets very, very hot. It gets so hot that in some places like Arizona, you could go outside and you could cook an egg just on the road. Yeah, it's pretty crazy how hot they can get. If you're walking barefoot on the road, which wouldn't be safe because cars drive in the road and, and, and roads are very dangerous. But if you were to be uh, in a, without any shoes or socks on, the road could get so hot it could actually burn your foot. Another interesting fact about roads is that roads have a shape. It's called a crown shape. They're, they're kind of bent and they're taller in the middle. They're kind of like a hill a little bit. In the middle of the road, they're a little bit taller than on the edges of the road. And what that does is it helps water to run off. So that way, if there's a lot of rain, the roads don't get flooded with a bunch of water and you don't have to drive through big puddles on, on the road as much because the water can drain off the sides of the road and go into gutters and then go into the sewage system. And so they have this crowning of their road. It means it's they're kind of bent or they're like a hill in the middle and that helps um, snow and, and rain to, to leave the, the road faster. Another interesting fact about roads is the black stuff that they're made out of, from what I understand, is made out of asphalt, um, which has some kind of, has some oils in it, has a, uh, so they can actually be kind of slippery after it rains because oils come out of the road often. But there, there's different kinds of roads. There's, there's uh, you know, you could have roads where it's just cement or concrete. You can have roads that are asphalt, which most roads are. Um, asphalt starts off being very soft and then they can roll over it with some big heavy rolling machines. And then it gets harder with time and it's a really nice smooth surface to drive on. Um, but I mean, there's also, I lived in Argentina for a while and there there's a lot of dirt roads in certain towns and dirt roads are are fine to drive on sometimes, but also sometimes they can get like nails and pokey things that could poke a hole in your tire and pop your tire so that you can't drive safely. Um, so there's all sorts of different kinds of roads. Um, there's probably even places where there's roads, you know, in, in Europe made out of bricks, a bunch of bricks put together. Um, well, let's now draw the sky. Let's draw this nice, light blue, beautiful blue sky. So we're gonna draw in all these white places in the background. We're gonna color in the sky blue. Maybe I can tell you some interesting facts about skies. So skies, um, in the skies there's different types of clouds. Um, I don't know if I'll draw any clouds right now, but maybe in another video I can show you how to draw clouds. So clouds, um, there's different kinds of clouds that look differently. Some of them are, are light and fluffy. 
others are kind of in lines and they look stormy. Um, there's a saying that um, red at night, sailors delight. So if the sky turns red at nighttime for the sunset, that often means that the next day it'll be blue skies, clear blue skies. In some parts of the world though, you could have a nice day, but it wouldn't actually be that blue. Some parts of the world have lots of pollution that makes the sky turn gray. And if there's lots of pollution and the sky turns gray, then no matter how nice of a day it is, it still is gray in that city, like in big cities, like in certain places in China where there's a lot of pollution. Like say if you went to Shanghai um, or if you were to go to New York City, a big city, um, there's often pollution because there's so many cars driving on the road and they let out um, some some gas and some some pollution um, which isn't safe to, to breathe and it can be harmful if there's too much well anyway I hope you enjoyed um, learning how to draw a fire truck with me uh, next time you see a fireman make sure you say thank you for helping keep us safe because they they put their lives at risk to help us to be safe and firemen are wonderful people so thanks for watching